Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this stupendous, stupendous Saturday. It's the weekend, baby. It's the weekend, and we're going in there like swimwear. You're looking absolutely amazing, by the way. And, yeah, I thought I would jump on and <laughs> talk about Sebastian Rogers this morning because this is a case that, for the most part, I've stayed away from. It's turned into a complete and utter circus. A complete and utter circus. The one good thing that comes of that, however, is that with the circus element comes drama. With drama comes interest. With interest comes of, of how can I say, like a bit of a virility on the online community. You know what I mean? People see it. It's in the public eye. People are kept interested. And therefore, Sebastian doesn't get forgotten about. But in the grander scheme of things, that doesn't really help him. It doesn't really help Sebastian. Nothing's that, nothing that's been said brings us any closer to finding him. Nothing that has been done, nothing that's been found has brought us, in my opinion, any closer to obtaining answers as to what has happened to Sebastian. But I think as time progresses, we can certainly strike off some of the things that are likely to happen. Because the hope that we have tends to fade over time. Because some of the things that you believe could be a potential, they become less likely. And let's just touch on that for a start. And then we'll talk about what is actually happening in the Sebastian Rogers case. How this case is turning into basically Summer Wells 2.0. We even have the introduction into the Sebastian Rogers case, our own Tim Mullins now. Can you remember Tim? Tim, Tim, Tim. But anyway, right. So we have a situation where this little boy's gone missing. He's gone missing. He's vanished off the face of the pl fucking planet. That's the be-all and end-all. That's, that's, that's the bare bones of it. A young lad who was last seen on a camera outside his family home goes into the house and then is never seen again. And look, at the beginning we can talk about the resourcefulness, despite the fact that he has autism, he's on the autism spectrum, he he could have had some form of resourcefulness, but that resourcefulness and the, the hope we have around that resourcefulness tends to run out over time, because that resourcefulness isn't going to be something that can carry him far enough to escape the attention someone would see him someone would be able to 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 perhaps get involved he would perhaps have to at some point seek help seek assistance and with that help and assistance will become a, a, a potential that someone would go to law enforcement and say, look, I, I've come across this um, this young man. I believe everyone's looking for him. And that spikes off into two avenues then. It spikes off into an, the two avenues of, is he, is he resourceful enough to stay out of the way of everybody for this long? Is he, is he truly going to be that resourceful? Leaves the house without shoes on, apparently, but then we're supposed to trust that he's resourceful enough to have evaded being seen, being caught, being captured. And I say captured in a way that, you know, law enforcement gets hold of him or a member of the public. And I know we've got this picture that's recently come out, but his stepfather turns around quite immediately and says, that's not him. Had... 99% of the community, I think, convinced it was, but stepfather immediately, no, it's not him. Very certain. And then the other branch of that is, if he is, and I've asked this question before, if he truly was that resourceful to evade all these people, then what would have made him be that resourceful that he felt that he needed to? to be that resourceful he needed to stay away he didn't want to under any circumstances risk not only going back to the proud feet but even seth his dad like some people said he, he wouldn't have been able to walk and get to his dad but he could have walked to someone to get to someone to say get me to my dad i'm missing and 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 that would have been an easy thing to have done it's not like someone around that area i would say within 
walking distance or hitchhiking distance that there'll, there'll not be somebody who knows that this young man is missing. And if he gave them his name, they could quickly search and, uh, and, and locate exactly what's going on. So again, this is why my hope is somewhat dwindling in the leave home under own volition, has some degree of resourcefulness and carries him in, in a direction of, of safety. That, that is slowly but surely wearing thin. And like I say, now we have a situation where there's there's clearly family issues. There's there's a divide. There's there's Camp Proudfeet and Camp Seth. But realistically, because of the aforementioned points, there there is an overarching issue here, and that is that this young man would seem to have gone through the mill a bit at home. It wasn't a happy and and. An, an bubbly home, a, a sanctuary for him at all times. I'm sure there was happy moments. Of course there is. There's happy moments. But what was the overarching in-home narrative, do we think? And again, it goes back to, did he leave under his own volition? Because if he left under his own volition, then something would have been a catalyst to that action. And it would have had to have been bad enough for him to have hired. Again, like I say, in many cases, you can't have your cake and eat it. But this case is becoming airy, airily similar to Summer Wells. Same area. TBI involved as well. And pretty much the same kind of dynamic. Albeit Ben Hill Road is like a bit of a you, you look at it as a bit of an image from a film like wrong turn whereas the proud feet of uh, they seem to have a much more how can i say financially stable situation around them uh, uh, but when you strip that part out of it and just look at the the child itself and the situation surrounding them vanishing very very similar and now, like I say, we now have Tony. Now, Tony Mathis, you may have remembered this name or heard this name, especially if you've watched my videos on Caleb Harris. This is a guy who came forward as a spokesperson for Caleb Harris's family. Caleb Harris is still missing, still missing, vanished again, vanished off the face of the fucking planet. And he's now reached out to Seth, um, he'd also reached out to the Proud Feet, but he's not representing them at this stage. He's just re representing Seth. And has kind of put himself forward as a media manager. I'm going to help you manage the media. And I immediately think to myself, well, this is just another fucking Tim Mullen. And I know you're probably watching this video, Tony, because you've reached out to me directly to try and get me to call you. And I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to call you. Um, I have respect for the fact that you're sort of wanting to help, but I have to question the motives of people who reach out to people in this situation and try and manipulate, and I call it manipulation because I feel that this is a manipulation of trying to become the front and centre so you get noticed. And I, I'm just saying it as it is. I'm just calling it as I see it. You are not someone who has, as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong and I'll apologize, um, any formal sort of education or formal qualifications in child abduction cases. Um, again, that you may have professional um, PR qualifications um, that would certainly be a little bit better than what Tim Mullen was in the Summer Wells case but we saw how Tim Mullen worked in the uh, in the Summer Wells case and that didn't bode well it didn't bode well and Tim Mullen would would be involved in the Summer Wells case and he would actually reach out to Brandy Neal in the, the Michael Vaughan case so we've got us again this is almost identical in the way that this is playing out circus online the interjection of this media personality, if you like, who goes front and centre to try and help the families. But in reality, we've seen how the likes of the Michael Vaughan case has gone, still still missing. Summer Wells case, still missing. Caleb Harris, still missing. And, and Sebastian, still missing. And what do we think is going to change? What do we think is going to... What? <laughs> it's like... 
doing the same thing over and over and over again and hoping for a different outcome. And that's all that keeps happening in these cases. The same thing happens over and over again. It becomes a media circus. We get the craziness around these cases. But the real central part, the integral part of these cases, never gets challenged. It never gets challenged because no one dare challenge it. Because it's unpalatable to do so. You can't say anything bad about the parents because they're going through it. Well, do you think they're going through it? Think about Sebastian. Think about what he is going through. Whatever story or narrative you want to pick, whether he left of his own volition, think of what he must have been going through and is still going through if he left under his own volition. Where is he? Why has nobody seen him? Why has nobody heard from him? You have to ask yourself if that is something that he is, again, doing under his own volition to make sure no one finds him. What would have had to have happened that was that bad that he felt that that was the route he had to take? And what are the alternatives? Again, I've said this before. What did someone go into that house and take this young man out of his house? Now, I would say that if a stranger went into that house and tried to grab him, he would have flipped his shit. Again, I don't know the lad, but I can, and I've known other children around his age with autism, and I would have liked to have seen someone who they didn't know try to grab them and take them out of their house. Let alone try and do that with the mum, what, a few feet away in another room on a three-hour phone call. Anyway, I digress. But again, you can't. nothing's going to change in these cases. Nothing's going to get better without things changing in the way in which these are being handled. And I don't want to turn around and point the finger and say, so-and-so did something, so-and-so did something. But something happened. And whether people want to stick their head in the sand, up their ass, whatever, something happened to this young man. It was either something happened that would be a trigger to him leaving, and then whatever has happened subsequently is because of that catalyst, or he didn't leave under his own volition. He didn't leave. And if he didn't leave under his own volition, then what the fuck happened? Because there's only two options then. If he didn't leave under his own volition, he was either taken from the house by someone, and if that's the case, what we're saying, someone actually went into the house and grabbed a a 15-year-old autistic boy. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Or the alternative, and that is that something happened. And don't get me wrong, there are other options, but they become then convoluted and over-complex. Some people who know about the UK will have probably remembered Shannon Matthews, where she was hidden by the family um it was it was a case that went on the the thing what happened in that however is around the time that this shannon matthews case was happening there was um new movement in the madeline mccann case and that kind of took the spotlight away from it and that would then lead eventually to shannon matthews being found she'd been hidden by um an uncle she was hidden in a compartment under a bed, a tiny little, you know, a tiny little space under a bed. And the idea was that they were going to say that she was lost, missing, um, until the, the reward fund built up enough for somebody to come forward and say, I found her. And then they were going to share the money between them. But it was it was a neighbour that had actually dobbed them in, basically. Um, yeah that's the short version of that story so things like that happen again there are other options um is this just some big play for money i i, I don't think that's the point here um i could be wrong because again i think there would have been a few people who didn't think that was the case in the shannon matthews situation and that's certainly how that turned out um her mum subsequently had <laughs> She done she done jail time, and then they give her a new identity, and she weren't able to to communicate with with Shannon or anyone like that, and her life just descended into further chaos, getting involved with people who were involved in doing things around children that they shouldn't have been. So a, a disgusting piece of work. 
but what is going on in this case? Apart from the the Summer Wells 2.0 situation, what is being done to help the boy? What is being considered around Sebastian and the disappearance itself? And what is going to be done in the future to stop things like this just consistently happening and just going down this same route? And people scratching their heads and saying, I wonder why that's happening. I wonder why we keep having these happen and, and um, they just go in the same direction all the time. I'll tell you why. Because law enforcement don't handle the fucker properly. They don't handle the problem. The the main focus when a child goes missing should be that child. Straight away, immediately. Fuck everyone else and their feelings. Fuck your feelings. They should be brought in, separated, and all of them questioned. Questioned and questioned and questioned until you can't question them anymore. You've found every single thing that you need to find out until you have exhausted every single avenue of questioning. You have to hold them until this boy is found then hold them until the boy's found. And I know people aren't going to like that. But you can't keep expecting things to work out differently when they're handled exactly the same and keep having this fucking outcome. Anyway, that's the harsh reality. And I'll catch you all in the next one.